Hello friends, this is my third video in the chest imaging series. In the previous two videos, we had seen about the normal radiological anatomy of chest radiograph. We have also seen the various projections available for chest radiograph and its implications in clinical practice. Now, let's see how to approach reading a chest radiograph. We'll see the basics of interpretation of chest radiograph. So I'll be dividing this topic into two parts, part one and part two. In part one, we'll be covering regarding the patient details as well as the technical aspects prior reading the chest radiograph proper. First and foremost, you have to adopt a systematic approach to reading a chest radiograph. So once you get a film, there are five things that you have to assess. First would be the patient details. Second would be assessing the technical parameters. Third, reviewing the normal anatomy. And fourth, rechecking the hidden areas. And finally, ensuring that the finding that you detected in the radiograph explains the patient's clinical symptoms, that is, answering the clinical questions. So in this video, we'll be discussing about the two aspects, that is, one regarding the patient details and second would be assessing the technical parameters. Now first, regarding the patient's detail, once you get a radiograph, you check the name. Ensure that the radiograph before you is the radiograph corresponding to the patient in question. Secondly, along with the name, you assess or check the age of the patient too. Why? Because certain diseases are more common in certain age groups. Now, next will be looking at the date of the radiograph. That is, date or the time taken. Why is that significant? Suppose a patient comes to you with clinical history of fever, cough and chest pain and you take a chest x-ray and you find some opacities in the right lower lung field. The first diagnosis that comes to your mind would be an infective consolidation. So you give the patient antibiotics and send the patient home. Now you call back the patient for follow-up. Along with reassessing the clinical status, you may ask the patient to obtain a radiograph. This is to look for resolution of the disease. If the disease remains the same or the consolidation remains the same, there can be many reasons. One of them would be that the patient is not responding to the antibiotics. Or the second thing would be that the patient has some underlying lesions or some underlying pathologies, which is the reason or the cause for such opacity. So remember, consolidation in the radiograph is a radiological diagnosis. The etiology ranges from infection to trauma to malignancy. So asking for serial radiograph may become necessary in certain clinical scenarios. In such cases, the time or the date when it was obtained becomes important. Finally, you look at the laterality that is established the right and the left sides. So going back to the first lecture, I have already mentioned, establish the laterality based on what is provided in the radiograph. Do not go with the lung apex or the stomach bubble to establish the right and left sides. You may end up wrong. So these are the three things that's coming under assessing the patient details. One would be the name and age, two with the date or time and three regarding laterality. Now coming to the next aspect, which is the technical parameters or quality of the radiograph. Why is it significant? So if the radiograph is not of adequate quality, it brings up many opacities, which may mimic pathology and you might end up getting wrong in diagnosing. So there is an easy mnemonic in order to remember what all to assess in quality. RIPE, R-I-P-E. The R stands for rotation, I stands for inspiration, P stands for projection, and E stands for exposure. Let's see them one by one. First, about rotation. Now, how do you assess rotation? First, look at the spinous process that lies between the clavicles. Mark out the medial ends of the clavicle on either side. Then you compare the distance between the spinous process and the medial ends of the clavicle. If it is equidistant, the radiograph is said to be non-rotated. If the distance on one side is greater than the other, 
the radiograph is said to be rotated to that side. So let's see some examples. So on the left side, you have the image. This line represents the line through the spinous process. Now I'm marking out the medial ends of two clavicles. What is striking? The medial end of the left clavicle is slightly at a greater distance than the medial end of the right clavicle from the spinous process. So this radiograph is said to be rotated to left, that is to the side where the distance is greater. Now, in another example, as you can see, I'm marking out the spinous process, the medial ends of the clavicle. Now let's see the distance. You can see that the medial end of the right clavicle is at a greater distance than the median end of the left clavicle from the spinous process. So this radiograph is said to be rotated to right. So what's the problem with rotation? There are two things. With rotation, the mediastinum will appear distorted. And secondly, the lung fields to the side of rotation will appear darker. Let's see two examples. On the left, you have the radiograph. You can see these are the spinous process. This is the distance between the medial ends of the clavicle to the spinous process. What is striking? You can see that the medial end of the right clavicle is at a greater distance than the medial end of the left clavicle from the spinous process. So this radiograph is rotated to right and you can see an added opacity in the right upper lung zone. What are they? These are the distorted magnified mediastinal structure, vessels to be precise, projecting in the lung fields mimicking a pathology. So. This is one of the drawbacks of a rotated film. Now, let's see the second aspect. Again, in the next image given before you, you can see the spinous process is somewhere here. And this is the medial end of the left clavicle. And this is the medial end of the right clavicle. What is obvious? You can see that the medial end of the right clavicle is at a greater distance or at farther away from the spinous process than the medial end of the left clavicle. So the radiograph is rotated to right. What else is striking other than the distorted mediastinum? We can see that on comparing the lung fields, the right-sided lung fields appear darker than that on the left side. So with rotation, to the side of rotation, the mediastinal structures will appear distorted, magnified, whereas the lung fields on that side will become darker. Now, Let's come to the next aspect of technical parameter, which is assessing the inspiratory and expiratory status of the radiograph. As previously described in my lectures, you can note that the chest radiograph frontal projection is to be taken in adequate inspiration, such that the 10th posterior rib cuts across the dome of the diaphragm. So this is an inspiratory fillet. Whereas on the other film, you can know that this is the dome of the diaphragm and only the eighth rib is touching or crossing across the dome of the diaphragm. So this is an expiratory film. So again, let's see the consequences of expiratory film. Firstly, you can notice that the diaphragm is at a higher level. As a result of which, the lung fields appear reduced in volume. Okay. So you may assume that the lung has less volume and attribute to some interstitial lung disease in such cases. The third problem with an expiratory radiograph is the apparent cardiomegaly. Since the diaphragm is pushed up because of inadequate expiration, it will cause flattening of the cardiac contour. So the heart will appear spuriously enlarged. So do not diagnose or comment on the cardiomegaly in an expiratory film. Now finally, as it is evident from the film, you can see in the basal lung fields, that is here, there appears to be increased haziness. This is because of the overcrowding of the vessels. So these are the four drawbacks of expiratory radiograph. Coming to the next aspect in assessing the quality, which is about the projection. So in my lecture number two, I have detailed about the ways to differentiate between andro-posterior and postero-anterior radiograph. So the dictum is for chest radiograph, the preferred one would be frontal PA projection. So summarizing the five important differences between AP and PA radiograph, 
In AP radiograph, the heart and mediastinum will appear magnified. The scapula will be overlying the lung fields much more than that in the PA film. So obscuring the lung fields. Then observing the clavicle, you can find that they tend to be more horizontal and slightly higher up. Finally, regarding the lung fields, you can note that they appear relatively reduced in volume and less sharp. Okay, you may go back to lecture number two for detailed description of the same. Now, finally, let's see the consequences of magnification. As described earlier, you can see that this is an AP film and this is a PA film. The heart, when you compare, appears magnified in AP radiograph. So, the take-home point, do not comment on cardiac size in an AP radiograph. So, finally, going to the last aspect in assessing the technical parameter of chest radiograph, looking at the exposure provided before you are the three radiographs. So what is striking between them? As you can see in this radiograph, the lung fields appear hazy and white, whereas one on the right corner, the lung fields appear darker, right? The one in the center is the normal or the adequately penetrated radiograph. So to call it adequate penetration, you have to note that the T8 or the T9 vertebral body along with its disc space should be just visible through the cardiac shadow. So I repeat, for an adequately penetrated radiograph, the thoracic vertebra number 8 and 9 along with its disc space should be projected just enough to see through the cardiac shadow. So one on the left is the underpenetrated radiograph and one on the right is an overpenetrated radiograph. So the problems with underpenetrated chest radiograph is that the lung fields will appear white and hazy. You cannot see the lung fields behind the heart and any pathology overlain by other structures such as ribs may be obscured. Now let's go to overexposed radiograph. The lung fields will appear dark and you can see too much of bone vertebrae through the cardiac shadow and the real problem would be obscuration of subtle radio opacities. So you may miss lesions. So friends, we have covered part one on how to approach reading a chest radiograph. So in this video, we have discussed about the patient details and the technical parameters or the quality of the chest radiograph. So always remember to check the patient's detail with regard to the name, age, date and always look at the laterality. And then coming to assessing the quality, remember the mnemonic right where R stands for rotation, I stands for adequate inspiration, P stands for the projection, that is APOPA, and E stands for exposure. So always remember the pitfalls of poor quality chest radiograph. So in the coming video, I'll be discussing about the part two of this lecture on how to read a chest radiograph, in which I'll be discussing about reviewing the normal anatomical structures, laying emphasis on the hidden areas of lung. So thank you.